Hello colleague. I saw your article and I have many questions. You say that almost everything that is told about atherosclerosis in humans is not true. How can you say that? Scientists and doctors have been studying plaques for 100 years. For this, animals and birds are used. After all, only after they fed the rabbits with pure cholesterol, they were able to discover the cause of the appearance of plaques. That cholesterol, floated in the blood, caused inflammation at the intima of the artery and provoked the appearance of plaques. Most likely, you did not study well at the institute, and therefore now you are talking real nonsense. To understand the modern view of doctors on atherosclerosis, I will tell you once again how we were taught at the institute. Then, if this is possible, you will show me where modern doctors are mistaken. Let's take a look at how a plaque appears. I, like you, was taught at the institute that an increased level of bad cholesterol has a very bad effect on the arterial wall. The inflamed endothelium begins to let bad cholesterol and monocytes into the intima, which become macrophages there. Macrophages eat all the bad cholesterol and become cells that look like soap suds, foam cells. The number of foam cells in the intima is becoming more and more. Foam cells are gradually destroyed and liquid lipids flow into the intima. Having merged together, liquid lipids form the necrotic core. Cholesterol crystals float inside the liquid core. When the endothelium cannot withstand stress, it ruptures. After that, the process of thrombus formation starts. Over many years, many of these plaques appear, which merge with each other and form a large plaque that surgeons operate on. You absolutely accurately recounted the official version of what a plaque in a human artery should look like. They also correctly described exactly how the plaque appeared, how it grew and how a blood clot appears. All this is true, but only for animals. And completely unsuitable for humans. This is simply impossible. It is written in any textbook that plaques in animals and humans are exactly the same. Nikolai Nikolaevich and Ichkov was able to create a plaque in an experiment 100 years ago. Fine, if the plaques are the same, we should see exactly what you just described in a person. Certainly, millions of doctors and scientists cannot be mistaken in such a simple matter. So we must see the inner layer of the artery, the intima, which, due to inflammation, is saturated with fluid, edematous and loose. Inside the intima are nuclei with liquid lipids surrounded by foamy cells. Around each nucleus there is a large number of small vessels that feed the plaque. Yes, only there should still be muscle cells, fibrous filaments and of course cholesterol crystals floating in liquid lipids. It turns out quite a motley picture, each substance is a different color. At a section of the stuck together plaques, liquid lipids should flow out. Most likely it will be difficult to tear intima from the inner layer of the artery, and after removing the plaque, a bleeding wound should result. Most likely it is. If such a plaque is located inside the wall of the artery, it can generally rupture during removal. Let's compare how the plaque you described is similar to the plaque in human arteries. The easiest way to see a plaque in a person is in the artery of the neck. There are many such videos and we can see the plaque well with our own eyes. During the operation, we see a smooth outer wall of the artery, without tubercles and damage. After the cut, we see a yellow tube that is located inside the artery. We can say that in the lumen of the artery lies a hollow yellow cylinder. This cylinder has a uniform structure it is elastic and durable. The plaque wall has no signs of inflammation, and has no necrotic nuclei. The plaque is easily and completely removed from the artery, looks like a rubber ball. After removing the plaque, we see a completely healthy wall of the artery, in which there are no signs of necrosis and bleeding. Given all this, we can already describe the characteristics of a real plaque in humans. A plaque in humans is a yellow tube, at least 3 to 4 centimeters long. Strong, elastic, soft, easier away from the wall of the artery. The plaque has only one color, yellow. It does not contain necrotic nuclei with liquid lipids. The outer wall of the plaque is even and smooth. The plaque tissue is homogeneous, has the same color outside and inside, nothing comes out of the wall. I propose to call such a plaque cylindrical cholesterol plaque. How is it that we see a completely different plaque? Where is the inflamed wall of the artery? Where are the tubercles with liquid lipids?
Where is the bleeding from the arterial wall? I was sure that all the so-called atheroma consists of merged plaques with necrotic nuclei inside. I understand why you said that the modern description of plaque in humans is wrong. I'm glad you saw the obvious. As the proverb says, better to see once than hear a hundred times. True plaque is soft, elastic, and looks like on a tube of cured silicone. More like a camera of a bicycle, which simply lies inside the tire. The plaque even completely repeats the bifurcation of the artery. And also, does not lose its shape after removal. Let's look at some more plaque removed from the artery. We see damage only on the inner surface of the plaque. The outer wall of the plaque is smooth and shiny. It can have a length of several centimeters to tens of centimeters. Easily separated from the wall of the artery. May have varying degrees of damage. But always retains the shape of a hollow cylinder. To remove the plaque, a large number of tools have been invented, which cut the plaque itself. Pass inside the lumen of an artery cutting off the yellow contents of the plaque, leaving the wall of the artery intact. All this suggests that the real plaque is a separate structure, which simply lies inside the lumen of the artery. Why hasn't anyone seen the difference between the plaques in 100 years? Surgeons call plaque in humans, altered intimacy. Made thousands of animal studies, research results are used to treat people. It turns out that all these studies and the results of these studies can only be used to treat animals. This means that for human health, completely different methods and methods of prevention and treatment are needed. It turns out that the fight against excess weight and smoking also makes no sense. You said right. For the prevention of plaque, they are not effective, but may be useful for the prevention of complications. Unfortunately, some of the modern prevention measures can themselves be harmful and cause plaque in humans. Can this be? When a person unsuccessfully tries to lose weight or quit smoking, he becomes very nervous and creates the conditions for the appearance of a plaque. In the meantime, the most important thing is that we saw with our own eyes a real plaque in a person, which is completely different from how it is described in educational and scientific literature. For the appearance of a real plaque, completely different conditions are needed. It only takes a few minutes for a person to have a real plaque in an artery severe compression of the artery wall. The plaque may appear quickly and dissolves just as quickly. One complete cycle of formation and destruction of the real plaque in the artery causes raising the level of bad cholesterol. Improper prevention and treatment provides high mortality from vascular diseases. Approximately 20 million people die every year from vascular disease, and several million more people become disabled. Most often this happens with a strong nervous experience, with cataclysms of a personal or global scale. War can kill without bullets and shrapnel. Even situations that did not directly cause death can lead to disability and death such as earthquakes and tsunamis. The death of a very close person can hurt a person so much that in a few days he himself can end up either in a hospital or in a cemetery. In April 2023, an article was published describing all the characteristics of a real plaque. In the article, I proposed a completely new theory of the appearance and development of a cholesterol plaque in humans, the hydrodynamic theory. Most likely, you in the audience have questions, and this means that I need to go prepare new videos with answers. I have already answered many questions in previous videos. There will be questions, right? I hope you liked it.